with a nice little bit of Jita juice. When Marvel's Avengers launched, the game was a total mess. I think this has more to do with COVID, but who knows? I've bashed the game a few times. Who needs Marvel's Avengers now? <laughs> hey Dad, can we get Marvel's Avengers? Son, we have Marvel's Avengers at home. You know, after playing that Marvel's Avengers beta, I'm not even upset. I'll be honest, I think this game should have been promoted similar to like Fortnite or like Killer Instinct on the Xbox. You have the base game where you have a couple of things to do, nothing crazy, but then later on if you want to, you pay for more characters or more missions. I think this would have been really good if done well, but the developers just fumbled the bag. This was meant to be the first major game for Earth's Mightiest Heroes. You got Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics developing it, but there's just so many missed opportunities. Like, I don't want everything to be a connected universe, and it makes sense it's not in the same continuity as Spider-Man, but this just feels like a missed opportunity. And we don't even have Spider-Man yet. Marvel's Avengers is a beat-em-up, RPG, loot hunter, online multiplayer hybrid, and I never expected that of the Avengers. I mean, we were gonna get a first-person Avengers game back in 2012 when the movie was releasing, so sky's the limit. It's been about a year since Marvel's Avengers came out, and I bet you're wondering, have they patched this game enough to make it worth buying? Is this game even that good? And is this a true Avengers experience? Let's find out. In Avengers, everyone feels so heavy and so weak. It's almost like they have the strength of a wet noodle. And everyone is just so slow. The sprint feels like a brisk jog. Even when Iron Man or Thor are flying through the sky, they feel way too slow. Iron Man can break the sound barrier and Thor is Thor. They need to be faster. They probably did this so that way everyone feels more assembled. Because it's meant to be played with friends, but there could have been so many ways around this. Kamala can hang on a Hulk, they have a really good relationship in the game. Black Widow can hitch a ride on Iron Man. This would have added such a sense of like, I got you covered. I'm seeing a trend lately in games where they're kind of walking away from the Arkham style of combat. You know, that fluid weightlessness, button mashing controls and the counter button. Now it's replaced with like heavy weight, time controls and dodge mechanics. This isn't bad by any means, but I do see this becoming the new trend. The hardest battle though by far in this game is the camera. It's always stuck on the character, so when you're swarmed by a bunch of enemies and you get attacked, you have no idea where it's coming from. Avengers adopts a live service model akin to Destiny, and this makes my skin crawl. You could still enjoy this game without spending a dime, but that should be on all games. It's meant to be played with your friends online, each one playing a different character. I think you can only have like four active party members at a time. I've had a couple instances though with the AI where if you're playing solo like me, they'll come and save you as if they were a real player and it's so well done. It made me feel like that they had my back. I know it's a game, but when you see the Hulk barrel rush a robot to save you, he can't help but to feel warm inside. You can easily create moments that feel straight out of the Avengers movies. There's upgrades and caches that give Avengers an RPG feel. So this feels like your team. I don't really see myself using the customization much, but I like knowing it's there. There is plenty of free content, but a gaggle more of paid content that I do not see myself buying. Unless of course it's MCU skins. But going back to the gameplay, the Avengers play and control exactly how they should play and control. Yeah, except for Hulk, he's the worst. He's slow and he's weak. It's the Hulk. He can literally crush planets. They gotta make him stronger. One time I was actually able to juggle an enemy as Iron Man, and then right after I did it as Captain America, it's easily my favorite thing to do now. But if you were to ask me to rank my favorite characters to play as, I gotta go with Captain America, Iron Man, Black Widow, Miss Marvel, Thor, and then Hulk. When the character designs were officially revealed, let's just say it wasn't met with enthusiasm. While I think they're just okay at best, I'm really happy that they're not MCU clones. Some of them, though, are still pretty awful. What the hell is that? And I'll be totally honest, it kind of bums me out that there's no comic costumes that have any cell shading effects. The best cosmetics are also behind paywalls, along with name cards, takedowns. You can't even unlock them either. Each suit is around $14, and no matter how bad I want to look as the Avengers from Endgame, I cannot in good conscience support that kind of behavior or philosophy, so I'm not giving them more of my money. Vote with your wallet. There are a ton of particle effects that happen on screen. It makes the game feel a lot busier than it really is. 
It gets insanely blurry and takes a frame rate dip during intense moments. It's not unplayable, but it's really annoying. The 1080p 30 frames a second visuals are gonna dip down to 560p 15 frames a second real quick. There's also some pretty bad pop-ins too. It feels like Avengers isn't calibrated for the right consoles. Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics added destructive environments and that adds a real element of force and vigor. Not battlefield level, but it's still really impressive regardless. I know I was talking shit language about the character models, but they look and act exactly how they should. Hulk sometimes twitches and fidgets, and I think it's a nice touch. Nolan North as Iron Man and Troy Baker as Bruce Banner were amazing castings. Sometimes though, when Nolan North is portraying Iron Man, I can't help but hear Deadpool when he talks. All right, is it just me or does Tony look like a single dad who only gets to see his kids every other weekend? The UI gives off a generic, techy, holographic look that every other game has going. I know Spider-Man did this too, but I feel like every comic book game is doing this so that way they're taken more seriously. And I'm just gonna be blunt right now, I am so sick of comic book games having a similar art style to Uncharted or The Last of Us. This one is a bit more comparable though to the first Watch Dogs. Don't get me wrong, those games look good, even Watch Dogs I think, but to me, realism? isn't much of an art direction. To me right now, it's just a missed opportunity. Comic book games need to take advantage of the fact that they're based off of comic books and do something a lot more interesting and unique with their art style. Imagine if it had a similar art style to like Sunset Overdrive, Ultimate Spider-Man, Fortnite, Mitchells vs. The Machines. Literally anything would have been more interesting than this. I just realized I didn't talk about the music. That's a first. That should say more than enough for how memorable the music is here. And really quick dudes and dudettes, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that like and subscribe button. It helps out me and my channel a lot and lets me know what kind of content y'all want to see from me. I want to do some more PSVR content, so be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so that way you know when it's posted. I also want to start live streaming a lot more. I want to give you guys as much content as I possibly can, but right now streaming is the way to go and I have so much fun doing it too. So if you want to see me react to your live comments, pop in. Avengers level design is easily the worst part of the game. You either get an open-ended city, a desert, or a secret aim base. It feels like the game is just being played on a constant loop. The Marvel Universe is so vast and diverse, and it's such a shame that this is all we really get. But I gotta give credit where credit is due. The Utah Badlands actually feels a lot like Utah. My mom straight up just walked in my room, saw me playing and asked me, why are you in Utah? Which immediately made me ask her, how'd you know this was Utah? But it also looks like the level that we got in Wyoming. And New Jersey looks a lot like San Francisco, which looks a lot like New York City. The assets are way too overused here. I wish I could talk more about the level design, but there's not really much to talk about here. You just do the designated objective, which is either destroy this, capture that, or save X. That's it. I will add though, it is really weird having a city to free roam in that feels so linear. You can veer off the beaten path as long as you don't hit an invisible wall and find caches that will hopefully upgrade your tech, but they don't even change the cosmetics. Yes, I did like how they kind of did this in Immortals Phoenix Rising, but at least I have the option to wear one set of armor that looks like another. Again, another missed opportunity here. Hardly anybody talks about the story here. To be honest, it ain't half bad. The characters are really well done. They feel enough like the MCU counterparts to feel familiar, but they have their own twists to make them unique. Troy Baker and Nolan North both do a phenomenal job with their respective roles, but Kamala Khan is the heart and soul of the plot. I have no idea what she's really like in the comics. I've only ever read like three issues with her, but she's amazing here. I did not expect to like Kamala Khan at all in this game, but I gotta say she is great here and this interpretation made me a fan. Kamala is basically every kid who grew up watching the Marvel movies. She grew up idolizing these heroes as did I and millions of others. The beginning level sees the Avengers celebrating A-Day by showing a helicarrier being charged by a brand new experimental substance called Terrigen. And since all of the Avengers are here, of course something has to go down. A bunch of mercenaries basically ambush San Francisco, leaded by the worst taskmaster ever. Yes, the worst taskmaster, 
At least Black Widows fits the overall theme of the plot. This one is just a cameo at best. You could say the same thing about Spider-Man's, but at least he had a really cool design. Square Enix takes a pretty big risk by killing off Captain America and having the team disband for five years. That aspect, along with Kamala being the heart similar to Cyborg, makes me think of Zack Snyder's Justice League. I should probably do the rest of this review in 4x3. The campaign makes it feel like the team is forming up for the first time. It brings a great energy to the crew. Too bad though, it just takes too long getting here. Like Captain America and Thor don't show up to like the very ending of the game. I feel like the best parts of the story are the smaller beats, when the characters just feel like genuine people. It's easily my favorite part of the plot. Also, it isn't broken up by forced comedy. So now all of the MCU haters can stop bitching about the jokes. Some Marvel staples though, you will never escape, like after credit scenes, connected stories, just to name a few. And when you go through the story, you see the Avengers that you unlock pop up in the main menu, and it's a really cool way of showing progression. The main villain here is MODOK. You have a different kind of origin with him that I've never really seen before. I usually see MODOK being built as an AIM supercomputer or something, so this is a nice change of pace. Upon further research, I realized it's actually a dude and not an android, so whoopsie! Throughout the story, his head gets bigger and bigger. The bigger the head, the bigger the evil. And it's a totally new story as well, not based on any previous comic or cartoon, at least as far as I know, so job well done, Square Enix. The absolute worst part of the story though is that I've already spoken about two of the three villains here. The Avengers have one of the most iconic rogues galleries of all time and they can only come up with three villains. What about villains like Crimson Dynamo, The Leader, Zemo, Red Skull, The Mandarin, Annihilus, Crossbones, Whiplash? I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. They could have done a lot more here though is all I'm saying. One big complaint that I kept seeing is that you mainly fight robots. To me, it's not that big a deal. Most games just have you fight the same character model over and over again, so it's a little bit of a nitpick, but maybe more villains would have broken up the monotony. Each character also has their own solo missions, so they really could have done a lot more with this. They might be saving this for more free content later on down the road like they did Black Panther, but games need to stop releasing incomplete. Tolerating incomplete releases is only gonna make things worse. I get that we're still in COVID, so it'll be a lot harder to do this, but at least a little more transparency would be best. So I'll reserve judgment for that till we know more. Marvel's Avengers has come a very long way. The beta was so average, nothing really special to it. At launch, it was pretty much unplayable, but this game is pretty ambitious. Playing in some really big open worlds with your friends, taking on baddies is what Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix had in mind. But I don't have any friends to play with, so I am solo, kiddos. I feel like the reason why it was so unplayable at launch was because it launched on the wrong systems. I don't think it was meant to be for the 7th gen. I think this was meant to be for the 8th gen. It feels like my PS4 could barely handle this game at times. Overall though, I enjoyed my time with Avengers. I know I just spent the past few minutes ragging on it, but that's because I see what this game could truly be. It's too bad it's just so average though. There's a lot that Avengers does right, like a brand new story, amazing voice acting, and some pretty intense action. But there's a lot that it does wrong, like microtense actions, crummy visuals, and an awful camera. There's also daily challenges that I promise you I won't be participating in. If I don't do them for Immortals, I'm not doing them here. I hate saying it, but the cons weigh it down a bit too much to make it the definitive Avengers experience. I respect the multiplayer approach, it just needs some more work. You're better off playing Ultimate Alliance 3 or any of the LEGO Marvel games in all honesty. Even Disney Infinity 2.0. I can't believe I actually went there. I hope Square and Crystal learned their lesson here. Guardians of the Galaxy is supposedly doing a complete 180, and I'm really hyped for that. Be sure to check out the live stream for that by the way. Anyway, dudes and dudettes, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to click that like and subscribe button. And let me know down in the comment section below, what did you think of Marvel's Avengers? Or are you more excited for Guardians of the Galaxy? I hear they're taking more of a turn similar to what they did with Spider-Man, where it's a bunch of free costumes. So I am so happy Square Enix is writing that wrong. Anyway, dudes and dudettes, you're never too old or too cool to play video games. Major Pineapple, out.